friends, Heidi here from Rain Country, God is good, all the time. And today I'm going to be troubleshooting some of the issues people are having with the vacuum chamber. Now if you're new to this whole idea, some people had asked Patrick to make a vacuum chamber and for the store so that they could have something to seal their jars with since the food saver tops like these have been really hard for people to come by. They're only good for sealing a wide mouth and a regular mouth but won't work on any jars such as a sauce jar like this that's smaller or something like this which is kind of somewhere in between on the size. So this is a green olive jar is what this one is. The chamber will seal these different jars, but some people that have bought the chamber are having a few different issues, and I wanted to cover that here, so hopefully we can get a lot of that dealt with today. So the first video I did was showing the one that Patrick made me. Now the difference between the one he made me and the ones that we're selling is, you know, every time he makes something, he tries to better it. I shot the video before we just, he decided to make these other changes. This actually has the tip that comes with the brake bleeder. And one of the problems we found is that uh, we were initially gonna, just going to make it like that and have people uh, supply their own brake bleeder tip, but there was a few reasons why we didn't like that idea, and one is that this tip, the fitting on the inside of the tip, can be different sizes from different brake bleeders. And so that wasn't really a doable idea. And so what he decided to do was get these brass fittings like this that we knew would fit with a brake bleeder hose, a standard uh, 10 mm by 6.5 mm hose. So the outer dimension of your of your brake bleeder hose, your pump hose, should be about 10 millimeters, but the inner dimension, that's what's really gonna matter, and that needs to be six and a half millimeters. You want it to fit very snugly on there. In fact, when you first, very first go to put your hoses on there, it should fit pretty snug. And so the whole idea was, you know, for people to have this and then be able to adapt it to use with their food saver, but then, he saw these smaller fittings and decided to make give people options. So if they had no intentions of ever using the handheld uh, brake bleeder pump, he decided to supply this size so it could work with a food saver or other such vacuum pumps that have the hose fitting size that is six millimeter on the outside by four millimeters on the inside. That's gonna be standard for most of your vacuum sealers like this. So that's what size this little adapter hose is. And so again, it should fit very snugly on there. You do not need to jam it on all the way clear up to this. As long as you get it past that first barb on whichever, whichever size you get, that should be sufficient. We decided also on a whim to offer these little short adapter hoses for those who might have a brake bleeder pump but you didn't it didn't come with an, a, a short hose like this. Or you decided to get the six millimeter size because that's what we're calling it on the store. This one's called six millimeter, the other one's called 10 millimeter. That's the only difference between the two chambers is the size of fitting. But if you got either one of these, you could adapt it to go one way or the other. So if you got one of these, then you could just buy this little short hose and put it on there and then that way it'll easily adapt if you decide you don't want to use, maybe you're using your food saver, your food saver just, you know, does like mine does and just quits working, you know, every two years you have to replace it, which I'm not replacing anymore. You can always fall back to the brake bleeder or if you just want the option of having the brake bleeder pump as an off-grid method in case you lose power, then this is the way you do it and you would just simply take your take the smaller hose and shove it inside the brake bleeder hose it's got to be nice and snug you should be able to put it in there until it stops moving and when, once you can do that it should be able to pull the air without pulling air through here but if it just if it if you can just do this and it just slips in and out with ease then it's not a tight enough fit now what i found out later let's come back and talk about these adapter hoses is that even when when we've bought like three different ones two of them we bought from the same exact place and uh for whatever reason i had some that seemed to fit just a tad bit looser than others 
And so I know at least one person that was having a problem using the adapter hose like this with the food saver. And, it, and she knew it was too loose. I mean, you can tell, see, this one's a nice tight fit because I can push it on like that. I don't have to go any farther. But if you can easily push it all the way up to the this part of the fitting, then it's probably too loose. And so I apologize to those that might have got too loose of a hose. But most people, if you're using the brake bleeder anyway, the brake bleeder pump, most of the kits already come with a short piece like this, so you shouldn't really have to buy it. So let me answer a couple of their questions too, is a lot of times when people go to order these, they'll get the 10 mm pump, but then they'll order the small little six mm hose. Well, the problem with that is this isn't gonna fit on there. So you, you have to get the hose size that matches the fitting in number. So if you're getting the 10 mm chamber, you purchase the 10 mm adapter hose. Again, you don't have to purchase these adapter hoses. They're just, options if you want to have them. If you're purchasing the 6mm chamber, then you need to get the 6mm hose if you're wanting to have that adapter. And the main purpose of me selling these was for these ones, because these are the, going to be the harder ones for people to find. You know, if they've got a brake bleeder pump, they might already have this. I, I actually decided to supply this on just, you know, just because, just in case. But this is the one, if you're getting the 6mm, then I do recommend you get this if you don't want to cut up any of your other hoses. And then here's another idea. One lady asked me, well, can I, can I get the 10 mm hose so that if I cut one end off my food saver hose, because that's how you got to get it to work with the food saver hose, is your, ho your food saver hose, whichever type you have, is going to have a fitting on each end like this one does. And in order to get it to work with the chamber, you would have to cut one end off. If you have one that looks like this, it's the gray end that you cut off because the green end is going to go to your machine itself. If you have an older machine that has two ends that look like this, I've already cut this other end off, it doesn't matter because the ends are exactly the same. But her question was, is could she take the 10, just a, the little short chunk like this, and then be able to put these back together. Let's just say it's this hose and it was maybe cut in half, then yes, you can do that. You can actually reconnect the original hose so you wouldn't have to worry about having a backup, another backup hose. Now let me talk about a couple other issues that you could be having. So one of them could be with this. Now one thing I have found with these is when, when you first get them, like this I've used several times, so it's actually pretty easy to to uh, operate this wing nut. Well, one of the things I know is sometimes these new lids are very, it can be very hard at first to turn that to get it tight enough to where you can actually pick up the whole chamber by grabbing the wing nut. That's how tight you want it on your chamber. If you go to pick it up by this and the lid slips off, you're not getting it tight enough in the chamber. And it might be that you just, if your hands aren't strong enough, that first several times that you're working that, it, it might simply be you're just having a hard time getting that tight enough. But it should get easier the more you work it to be able to, to, be able to get that so it has a nice snug fit. Let me explain again how this works so you don't have to go back and watch the older videos. So how this thing works is when you tighten this wing nut down, it pushes this rubber gasket out. And so that pushes against the inside. This is also known as a plug or a gripper. And it's made for this kind of pipe. That's exactly what it's made for. And it pushes itself up snug against the inside of that pipe. And there shouldn't be any leaks. That's what they're made for. And just so you know, Patrick worked in water and sewer treatment and fix, had to fix many pipes many times. And he's worked with all this stuff, so he knows how it works. And those are made to go together. There's no reason why that shouldn't work, but you have to make sure that's on tight enough. If it's not tight enough, you're gonna pull air through here and you're not gonna be able to pull a vacuum from inside that chamber. 
So that could be one of the issues. So we talked about the hose issue. It could have to do, if the hose is too loose, then you're not gonna pull a vacuum. If the lid is too loose, you're not gonna pull a vacuum. Now let's talk about the jars. So some people are working with different types of jars like this. And they know that I talked about how the chamber, one of the benefits is not only can you seal both regular and wide mouth jars, you can also seal ir irregular jars like these. However, if your jar lids are damaged or dented in any way, like this one, for example. So this is um, some marshmallow root from my garden. And I've had it in this jar for a while, and I'm like, oh yeah, I can go vacuum seal like that. Even though I'm not worried about this, these in here needing to be vacuum sealed themselves, I just decided I wanted to play with it. I already had it full, so I figured I'd do that. So I put this in the vacuum chamber. I I got it all, the jar all sealed up and it worked great. However, <laughs> I knocked it to the ground, it landed on the edge of the lid and I heard the thing, it lost its seal. Well, because it dented this lid in such a way, and Patrick tried to straighten it out, you can see a little dent right there. Because of that little dent, it will now not vacuum seal. So we can't, no matter what we do, this is not gonna seal. So if your jar is too beat up, your lid is too bent up, or you've got any defects or cracks or anything along the rim of your jar, you know, any powders, anything embedded in this rubbery part, then that can prevent it from getting a good seal. But this jar, if Patrick did just seal this empty using the chamber, and so now what I'm gonna do, I went ahead and opened it up again, and I put the walnuts in there, and so I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate with this particular jar. So I'm gonna use the brake bleeder pump to do this, but again, the same, if you're curious at how to use the food saver with it, go ahead and check out my last video I'll link to down below, and I show demonstrating with that, or one of the two, I don't know. I'll make sure I put the one where I demonstrate with the food saver. So again, if I'm gonna use this size, I would put this little adapter hose on here, if I'm, with, if I'm going to use a brake bleeder and then put the brake bleeder hose, this ends up inside the brake bleeder hose. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use this bigger size here. So let's get not that jar. That's the one with the bent lid. Let's go ahead and put this walnut jar in here. Again, make sure that you tilt your jar gent and, and just kind of gently slide it in there. You want to make sure you don't just like have it on your counter and just drop your jar in there because it's a good way to crack your jar. So you just want to slide it in there very carefully. And notice I have plenty of space. So you have to also realize that this thing here has got to fit down in there. Now with these, you can see this, with these particular jars, it just barely fits. So that's actually kind of sitting on top of there. However, once you go to tighten this down, it will it shortens up as well. So it, it will still work. Because Pat, like I said, Patrick just sealed this jar up. So again, I want to tighten this down enough that I should be able to pick up that whole thing, even with that jar in there, without dropping it. So now I take the brake bleeder pump hose, and I'm going to put that on there. This this hose is a little bit looser because it's older and it's just a little bit bigger. So I'm pressing, I'm pushing that on there farther than I would if I was using this one. I don't need to push this one as far. I like this pump better because it's just a little sturdier than that one. So what I do with this one is I save this for using with the food saver tops and then use this one with the chamber because it does take a little longer to pump that up. Now, I say just go, don't worry as much about the numbers on this thing. So mine, the numbers are off anyway. So don't worry so much about where that needle goes. Pay attention to when it stops moving. Okay, I had to take this back out because I forgot something. So when you put any of these lids on, it doesn't matter if it's this kind of lid or this kind of lid, put it on just fingertip tight. Don't wrench it on there really tight. Just put it on fingertip tight. It's gotta be on there snug enough that it's gonna hold that lid in place, whether it be a canning jar lid like this or this kind. If you have it really tight, it's gonna take a lot longer for you to pull the air out of the jar. And so this will make it come out faster, but if you have it too loose, then the air is just gonna keep coming back out again and you're, not, you're just not gonna get it to seal. Okay, so here we are. So coming back to this, again, just pump this up until the needle stops moving, but but remember, 
it's going to take time for it to get the air out of the jar too because the first thing it's going to do is going to pull the air out of the chamber first and then it's going to pull the air out of the jar okay so we're going to pump this up again i'm just going to pump until the needle stops moving you might even with certain jars you might even hear a pee now this is still moving but barely so again it's going to take a little bit longer because it's trying it's got a lot more air to pump out so now it's pretty much stopped i'm going to sit here for a moment and you can see the needle sort of dropping down that's the air coming out of the jar as well and so you might want to just do that once just to kind of see what it's doing but then go ahead and pump it back up as far as you can get it i'm not saying you have to do that every time but you might want to check it just kind of play with it a little bit and then let's go ahead and take this off i don't know if you heard that air escaping there now this should be sealed and i didn't spend that much time on it yep i can see this is dented in Instead of being flat or even a little bit convex, it's a little bit concave. And so that's on there, that's on there real good. So it's vacuum sealed, those walnuts in there. So again, I did this with, this is not a canning jar. It's just a, a recycled green olive jar, the kind that I get at Costco. And then this one here, I don't know if you can tell, but this is very well sealed. That button is in. This is one of those Atlas jars this is the ones I got for free some, from somebody. It's on there very tight, and I don't have Patrick's out in the shop working, so I'm not going to bring him in here to try to open it for me. But I vacuum sealed this using the chamber. And as I demonstrated in another video, I've even sealed jars, lids like this, with just a little silicone thing. I can link to these down below. This is just a, a decorative lid. But, you know, if you want to put a little, if you're wanting to use it for food, you can just spread a little bit of beeswax or something in there to kind of protect your food because these aren't food grade. And you can get either get the silicone rings or you can even get the full silicone that covers the full inside. And what that'll do is it'll make it more food grade, but it will also make it so that you can vacuum seal it. So let me put this jar in here as a spacer because you can use, this is a sealed jar. You can use another jar as a spacer so when you're doing these little jars like this you can t not have so much to have to vacuum out but also you can do this and this you can do a pint and a half pint you can do two half pints if they're like this or at least two half pints like this but anyway i'm just putting this in there as a spacer but let's say this wasn't vacuum sealed and i had something in this jar stuck in here and, I, and that wasn't vacuum sealed. Yes, I can vacuum seal them both at the same time. But right now, all I'm doing is using this one as a spacer. So I'm gonna, just to fill up some of the air, air space in there. So I'm gonna put that in there and I'm gonna pump this up. Make sure I get that top on nice and tight. You want it very tight. Okay, again, I can pick that up. That means it's on there snugly. Double check your hose. And then just go ahead and pump that up. And I'm just going to show you, you can even use those decorative lids as long as you have either one of those Tatler rubber rings. I've done it with those two. Or a little silicone ring to stick in there. It just needs something around that edge so that it will seal just fine. Okay, so I don't care about what the number of the gauge says. What I care about is the fact that the needle stopped moving. Let's take this out. And yep, this is sealed, okay? It's slightly concave, and I can't turn this easily, okay? That's on there very, very snug. Just like with anything else, when, when you're canning, vacuum sealing, or whatever, you want to check the inside, this little gummy side, inside here, of the lid. And this was a previously used lid. It was used for canning. Was, I can tell by the way it looks it was used several times so I reuse the metal lids again and again sometimes a little dent right out here on these kind of lids will not affect the integrity of it you should still be able to get a seal it's if the dent goes clear across then that's going to be a problem you can have a dent in the middle of the lid here and it shouldn't be a problem unless it's a deep dent or if it has a hole in it but area that you have to worry about is this part right here, not so much this little lip right here that comes over. That shouldn't cause a problem if it's just pulled out just a little bit. But anyway, so now let me cover the tightness of this. When you go to put this on, if you're using a canning jar, 
same thing. Just put it on enough that it's going to hold that lid in place, but don't crank it on there like you would do if you were going to put it in the canner because that's going to either prevent it from pulling the air out of the jar or it's going to make it take much longer and you just may never get a seal. If it's too loose, if it's just sitting on there, it might not hold it it might not hold it on there good enough for it to be able to suck the air out and then hold that seal. So let me do a quick recap on the four major problems you could be having while you're not getting a seal. It could be the hose size is just a little bit too loose. And I do promise that uh, from now on when anyone orders the chamber with the hose, I will double check each hose against each chamber to make sure it has the fit it should have. It could be that you're not getting the lid on tightly enough so make sure you're getting out real tight and the other two problems could be in regards to the lids if it's a damaged lid like this one it's not going to work or if you're putting the lid on too tightly when you go to put it in the chamber that could be one of your other problems so those are the four main issues that could be causing you to not get a good seal on your jar or even a seal at all now one more thing I wanted to say and that is just in regards to the jars that fit into here. So keep in mind that we are going by American measurements on this. I know by this I'm going by millimeters because that's how a lot of your hoses are measured. But these are four inch pipes. These will hold the American canning jars up to one quart. Okay. One thing I did find just yesterday is that those who bought the chamber that are in Canada they might be using the Canadian jars I don't remember the name of it but I'll put it right here I know it starts with a B and I don't see I tried to look them up and I don't see a dimension on the jar but one thing I do know is that our jars are quartz our jars that are this size they are quartz in Canada because they go off the metric system their jars that look similar to this size are one liter well one liter is bigger than one quart and so what my guess is is that instead of making up the difference in height on the jars they made up the difference by making them slightly wider and that could cause make it so that you can see this just you know our jars are slightly squared that will make that so it, it might not fit into your chamber at all if you're using the Canadian brand jars where ours fit in there perfectly. It just slides right in there. Now, here's another issue that Patrick bought, brought up for those of you who are in America that made your own chamber. You might have bought a different type of piping. So he, you know, because again, like I said, he worked in water and sewer for a long time. If you get a different type piping, the diameter might be four inches across. The inner diameter might be a little smaller than the inner diameter of this kind of piping because it's thicker he said there are some of the that those pipes that are made a little bit thicker and if that's the case and you see how perfectly this fits down in here if you're using the wrong piping to to make your chamber out of then you might not be able to get in get that in there. i really hope this helps solve some of the issues that people are having oh and before i go if you go to our store and you don't see the chambers, you can't find them on the store at all. That simply means we're just currently out of stock. We're always getting more parts in and getting more made. Remember, the chambers aren't the only things that we're making or doing and putting up on the store. We're trying to keep up on the uh, colloidal generators has been another thing. I'm constantly getting custom orders for skirts and aprons and sometimes I do try to do a batch of aprons and get them up on the store but you know and keeping the skin cream and the lip balms and I had to quit doing the soap for the time being and I don't know when now I'll be able to get back into that so anyway just keep coming back and keep checking and event you know you should be able to find them don't give up because uh where I think we're starting to get ahead enough now that we can start keeping them pretty well stocked. And even if we do go out of stock, we should be able to get them up and back up again in just a short period of time. So don't give up looking. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.